I'm Joey Valance. And my name is Bray. And you're tuned in to Ones to Watch, baby. Let's go. Who is Joey Valance and Bray? Joey Valance and Bray is two people, and we are two kids who like making music and having a good time. We're having a great time, and we're here to rock some hip hop into your face. <laughs> <laughs> it's very fun. It's very jolly. <laughs> jolly? <laughs> no, it's uh, genuine, raw energy. Yeah. Energy. And penis. No. No. And no, energy. Energy. Raw. It's fun. Fun. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun and jolly. Fun and jolly, one word. Yeah. Thank you. We met in college. Um, we were both little freshman babies, and now we're still babies, but we're older. Um, and uh, yeah, we just met, and he was making music, and I was like, that looks cool. And we started making music together, and here we are at Lollapalooza. At Lala, baby, here we are. Lala. Yes. Ugh, I have no idea. So I went for telecommunications, and I really wanted to go into like marketing. So I would have been doing some like marketing job. I literally was applying for so many jobs before this stuff like was happening, and um, yeah. So I don't know. Probably some like stupid marketing thing, hating my life. But yeah, I was. Uh, I went to school for health policy administration, and I wanted to go into medical device sales. So I'd probably. Be, I'm still at my parents' house but I'd probably be at my parents' house looking for a job and sending my resume places uh, and working at a, a restaurant, so. No, who is that? Who the Beastie Boys are. No, of course we have. I mean, they're a, absolutely a major influence, like among so many different people and genres, but of course, yeah. We'll, we'll tell our stories, but I, I grew up, my dad was very, very into hip hop, R&B, funk, jazz, um, and so that's all I grew up on. And so that was just playing all the time. And so that's what I really grew up with. And so that sort of style and that um, music inspired me from a very young age to get into music. So I started producing and uh, now we're here and it's just kind of come full circle with the stuff that we grew up with is now um, something that we put into our music among like so many other genres and like modern sort of styles fitting into what we're doing now. But um, yeah, it's just like what I grew up with and same for Brayden. Yeah. We pull um, from a lot of, we have inspiration and pull from a lot of different places on like, you know, our style and everything. But yeah, our dads are definitely like our biggest inspiration. Like my dad was like a old school b-boy in like New York City, like breakdancing in the subway and stuff. So when I was growing up, he was playing all that like old school stuff. He was playing like Michael Jackson and like Wu-Tang and all that stuff. So that's what I grew up listening to. So yeah, like from a very, very young age, I just like had that stuff pumped into my ears. And like, that's kind of what like molded, like kind of like my sound and my style today. And just like from a young age, I was like, uh, I had a huge appreciation just for like the art form of hip hop, the style, the sound, like everything about it. So, I mean, and here we are today, kind of like, you know, patching, packaging that style up in our own way. And it's a, it's a lot of fun. Yes. Yeah. Every, yeah, every song is made in my bedroom. Um, I produce everything there too. Um, like we've stepped foot in a couple studios, but it just like doesn't work. It's like everything just like is made in one or two days out of my bedroom. Um, and then like a week and a half later after the song's done, it's out. So uh, yeah, so that's just the process. He comes over and just like, we just mess around until something fun comes out of it that we fucking love, so. Uh, I ordered a club sandwich. They brought out a whole ass menu. That was crazy, by the way. I was like, you know what? We're here right now. Uh, also, we like, stole everything after we had a bunch of like skincare products like in the green room and we literally opened our backpack and just went and like took like everything that place was stocked up man shout out to ellen she was very sweet All, everybody in the crew is very sweet we we're very happy to be part of her last season but yeah i mean like the snacks were banging we had a there was a good drink we had there too like a like a it was like a kombucha like i don't even know what it was but it was delicious whatever i don't know you don't like kombucha no no, it was like some uh, like fruit infused thing. It was really good, but yeah, we like took everything we possibly could from the green room that was like edible or consumable. You know, we weren't being like dicks, you know, but they like, said we could take it. and we were just like, okay, yeah, we'll have it. no, but yeah, it was, it was it was a great experience. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough because you know, like, it's a it's like a whole mental game, especially you know with social media in general. Like, you have one thing popping, like, oh, is there gonna be another moment or whatever? But TikTok is really just like a huge primary avenue for getting your music discovered um, and that's like 
something that we really took advantage of and we love making content it's like really really fun so a pro is like you're having fun and you're getting your music out there and um but not everything's gonna hit and there's like the one thing where you know you're trying to build an authentic audience that comes with you outside of the platform and that's not always gonna happen um but i think we found a way to really you know promote ourselves in a way that feels like you're just getting like genuinely us and so people attach to that and we found a lot of um, success and just fan building because of TikTok and um, you know it's just like so hit or miss obviously but it's uh, it's really helped us and it's been like a really primary way for us to get our sound out there and now you know a year and a half later of like promoting it now we're here at fucking Lollapalooza so love to hate TikTok hate to love it <laughs> it is that fried is the best way yeah. to describe it I don't know mine I've had a lot of like, um, dude, I don't even know how to describe it. I don't really scroll through TikTok as much as, yeah, I don't, do you, do you go through TikTok? I like, I like rarely ever like watch TikToks. It's surprising because I like rarely watch TikToks. I always just like, I'm on there to post and I'm like, okay. But when I'm on there, it's like, I don't even know. It's like just a lot of really old people doing <laughs> like <laughs> stupid stuff <laughs> because that's like the shit that I send to my friends because it's like funny as shit, but like. Yeah, it's it's fried. It really is. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's a lot. It's a good, a, a good, a good, a good bit. <laughs> a good bit of it is like uh, music related stuff, and then a lot of it is just like DIYs on stuff that I'll never need to learn how to do. Like you know, I don't even know. I have a lot of camping stuff for some reason. Camping. I've never gone camping. I don't even like camping. I have a lot of camping stuff. Cars, camping, and music. Sometimes food, too, like how to make food and whatnot. You know, just the average things, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> I think that's both. I think that's equal. That's shared part. I'm usually pretty good about getting up, but, like, especially this morning because we, we had, like, three hours of sleep and my alarm didn't go off. Or maybe it went off. I just didn't hear it. But our our natural body clocks are messed up. We just kind of get up when our when we get up. That's a double pointer. That's one and one. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought there was a point system. <laughs> one, two. <laughs> what is this? If you've heard our music, we both have a lot of wise cracks. I don't know. We keep each other entertained. Like we're both just fucking goofy motherfuckers. So like that's that's a hard one. That's another shared point. That's up to your discretion on who's funnier. I'm not. We're not going to answer that. Look it up on Google. Look it up. You have yours already? Yeah. Oh yeah. Here's mine. My favorite line is the first line that we like I ever wrote for any of our songs, which was "I always wipe twice for good measure, once for business, and once for pleasure." And so that's like the one stick out line from our song "Crank It Up," which is the first song that we made together. And um, that just like set off the whole thing. We were just like, I screamed that into the microphone, and we were like. Like, oh my god, this slaps. Like, doesn't mean anything. It's just funny as fuck. And we were like, oh my god, this slaps. So. I don't know. I feel like in a lot of the lyrics that I write, I have a lot of deep cut cuts that people just, like, don't understand. Like, uh, like in Punk Tactics, when I say, like, get over here like Scorpion, put you to sleep Kevorkian. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know. I like that one because it's like, I did a project on, I think, Dr. Kevorkian. The guy was, like, killing people in New York City, like, um, you know, in, in his van. I don't know. I, did, I, it, I couldn't think of anything that rhymed with Scorpion. And I was like, Kevorkian? I did a project on him in, like, sixth grade. So, I don't know. Yeah. And then, like, Swing Through Hood, Spider-Man, Initial D, Drift Japan. Initial D is a good, like, anime there. And then, uh, Starvin' Wolf, Duran Duran. Like, Shout out Duran Duran, dude. Hungry like the wolf. I mean, not a lot of people get that one. I've had one person at the show come up to me and tell me that they understood that line. So shout out to that guy. Hooligan. But yeah, our, our song Hooligan is like a bunch of good one-liners. We're just like talking about our childhood and like kids' cuisine and shit like that. And Green Machine, yeah, 316. Yeah, uh, step into the scene, 360s, and my Green Machine. I don't even know the fucking no. Step it. No, wait, wait. Okay, hold up. Yeah, wait, wait. Step into the scene. No, nobody can do it like me. Zoo Pals plate with the kid cuisine. I was the blacktop king. No, no. Was it? Yes. Fuck me. I don't even know. <laughs> we're performing tomorrow. Remember by tomorrow because we're going to have to know. No, but yeah. we. Have... Sorry, that was a lot of answer for that. We just did our whole song, so you're welcome. Dude, yeah, because I'm always like doing shit and I'm like, I don't want to text anybody because I'm just like in the zone. But I hate replying to people. I've never left one. I hate Yelp. You know when you go, you know when you try, you know when you like look up a restaurant and you click on the Yelp and it makes you download the app. I've never downloaded. Yelp. I've never heard anybody, and I don't think this has ever been said. I hate Yelp. I don't like, <laughs> like, 
like, why would you? <laughs> what do you hate about I it? I don't care enough to leave a review about anything. If it sucks, it sucks. If it's great, it's great. Why do I gotta write about it? I don't need to write about it. That's do true. You even, like product reviews when you get something on Amazon. I do when I buy. I do when I buy games, like on Steam. <laughs> I write like in-depth reviews about video uh, games, I've but. Never I don't know, maybe me. I like my food too, so. Like who's leaving a review on how they're like Dickie's pants fit? You ever read those? I read them. I read them because I want to know, but I never leave them. I'm very hypocritical because I want to know, but I'll never write one. Oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. Let's go. Oh shit! Dickie's, I wear a 36 32 slim fit, okay? <laughs> I don't even remember what I wear. Come on, man! <laughs> Just please. This has been Joey Valley and Bray. And we're here partying with you. Thank you so much for having us. It's been amazing. Thank you.